this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will burn its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. I know this rose will open. I know my fear will burn away. I know my soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. Oh, 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 oh. Good evening, and welcome to this worship service, virtual worship service of MCC Sacred Journey, uh, coming from Hendersonville, North Carolina. I'm Pastor Joan Sanyuk, and uh, on behalf of the whole church, I want to welcome all of you to this worship service tonight. Wherever you are, know that God loves you and that we're glad to have you with us. We begin by recognizing that we are in the presence of God, that God is always present with us. And if God is present with each of us, then we must be one with each other. And so I begin by sharing, by offering you the peace of God, and may that peace of God be with you. And please share a sign of that peace with whomever you might be with. And if you have a candle, now would be a good time to light it, just to remind ourselves of the presence of the sacred. Our opening song this evening is Alleluia, Alleluia. Uh, you should recognize the tune as Hymn to Joy. We will sing verses one and two. And in just a moment, I will have the music queued up and we'll be ready to begin. Heaven and praises 
ways. Sing to God, O hymn of gladness. Sing to God, O hymn of praise. He who on the cross as Savior for the world's salvation bled. Jesus Christ, the King of glory, now is risen from the dead. Now the iron bars are broken, Christ from death to life is born. Glorious life and life immortal, on this resurrection born. Christ has triumphed and been conquered by his mighty enterprise. We with him to life eternal by his resurrection rise. Amen. As we begin our worship this evening, I'll remind you that last week we heard the Easter story from the Gospel of Matthew. This week we're going to switch to John's Easter story. John's second Easter story, actually, if you're paying attention to the Gospel. This one starts with Jesus' disciples together, locked inside the same house, afraid that forces outside that house could break in and kill them. The Bible does not say whether or not they were getting cabin fever. On that Easter evening and the following Sunday evening, the church was in that room, afraid of the Judean leadership that got Jesus killed. Tonight, if we have fears, they're probably quite different ones. Fear keeps us on guard against danger. But it can also blind us to possibility. Thomas was blind to the possibility that Jesus was really risen. What about us? Will you join me, please, in the responsive prayer? God tells us again and again that life is stronger than death, and sometimes we forget that. God, lead us to live as different people, people who know that life wins. So, may we not let fear blind us to the possibilities of new life. Even when we may be doubtful, life still wins. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Anne to read the scripture for us now. Scripture reading is John 20, 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. I'm sorry, hold on a second. Mm 
I'm sorry for that. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. It is still in the same day. But right at the beginning of... One moment, please. I'm going to start this again. Hello. Happy Easter. Easter greetings to you. I'm Reverend Elder Cecilia Eggleston, moderator of Metropolitan Community Churches. And today I'm going to be preaching from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Will you pray with me? Loving God, you sent Jesus into the world so that we may know you face to face. As we celebrate the resurrection of new life in Christ, help us at this time hear your word and live in your name, in the name of Jesus, 
and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Some days are just overwhelming, aren't they? You can't really believe that you're in the same 24-hour period. So much has happened, it's hard to comprehend that you're still in the same day. Right at the beginning of this particular day, the first day of the week, an extraordinary event had happened. Several women, including Mary Magdalene, had gone to the tomb, ready to anoint the body of Jesus. But when they got there, the stone had been rolled away. The grave cloths had been discarded and there were angels telling them that Jesus had risen. The women hurried back to see the disciples. In the gospel, according to Luke, however, the disciples didn't believe the women. They thought it was nonsense, an idle tale. And we hear how Peter and John rushed to the tomb to check for themselves. John's gospel tells us that Mary also went back to the tomb and she stayed there and was the first person to see Jesus alive. But she didn't recognize him. She was so filled with grief. All of this would be plenty for one day. The stone rolled away, an empty tomb, angels, and then the first oh sighting gosh. of the risen Christ. Please, please pardon our technical difficulties. If the women, they thought it was nonsense, an idle tale. And we hear how Peter and John rushed to the tomb to check for themselves. John's gospel tells us that Mary also went back to the tomb and she stayed there and was the first person to see Jesus alive. But she didn't recognize him. She was so filled with grief. All of this would be plenty for one day. The stone rolled away, an empty tomb, angels, and then the first sighting of the risen Christ. But there was still more. The disciples had gathered together again behind locked doors to discuss all that had happened still terrified of what might happen to them if the authorities acted against them as followers of Jesus. Jesus suddenly appeared. Not through the door, not in their collective dreaming of what could be. Jesus appeared in flesh, in person. He offered them peace using a traditional Jewish greeting. How they must have needed that piece. How amazing it must have been, not only to see him, but to hear his voice. Disciples who had run away and disappeared into the shadows when Jesus was arrested, were now being offered peace. Jesus breathed on them, and sent out the Holy Spirit to them. They now heard that they could forgive sins. I wonder if they understood from this that they could forgive each other and they could forgive themselves. What a weight to be lifted from shoulders. What a moment this must have been to see Jesus the risen Christ, to receive peace, to be given the power of the Holy Spirit and the authority to forgive sins. This was all huge. And Thomas missed it all. <laughs> we don't know whether he was there 
to hear Mary Magdalene's first and second announcements, or whether he talked with Peter and John, confirming their story of visiting the empty tomb. What we know is that he certainly missed out on this incredible experience of meeting the risen Christ. And he didn't believe it. But remember, Thomas wasn't on his own in his disbelief that day. The disciples didn't believe the women when they came back, telling of the empty tomb and the appearance of angels. Peter needed to see for himself. Mary couldn't believe it when she encountered Jesus in the garden. Her logical conclusion was it must be the gardener talking with her. And like Jesus, uh, like Thomas, she wanted to touch Jesus, to hold him, to know that he was real. And we can understand all these doubts after seeing the body of Jesus wounded, broken, lifeless. This amazing, extraordinary news was simply too much to take in. So we can understand a little if Thomas was struggling. But what sort of person was Thomas? Was he a doubting sort? In Job's, John's Gospel, we get a couple of other snapshots of Thomas, which give us a sense of his character. In John chapter 11, we read the story of Lazarus. Now, Lazarus, Mary, Martha, were this family unit that with Jesus' close, close friends lived in Bethany. Jesus gets word that his friend is seriously ill. Jesus waits until Lazarus has died and then announces to his apostles that they are going to go to Bethany. His disciples remonstrate with, them, with him. This is what John says. But Rabbi, they said, a short time ago, the, Jew, the Jews there tried to stone you and yet you're going back. But when Jesus insists he will go, we read this. From John eleven sixteen, Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. Later, in John 14, Jesus is talking with the disciples at the time we now call the Last Supper. He has washed their feet. He has predicted that Judas will betray him and that Peter will deny him. Then Jesus says this to his followers. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My parents' house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? A couple of snapshots there of Thomas. This doesn't seem to me to be a man who is a bit flaky, this man wanted to follow Jesus. He said he was willing to die alongside him. His heart must have been broken to see Jesus dying on the cross. All his dreams, all his hopes for what they would do together in the future came crashing down around him at this time. He wasn't going to have his heart broken again by believing some incredible story, even if he trusted those who were telling it. He was going to keep himself, his emotions, his tender heart in check until he could be totally sure of the truth for himself. After a whole week of waiting and wondering, 
a whole week maybe of the other disciples trying to convince him of what has happened or maybe starting to judge him because he didn't believe them. Jesus appeared again. He offered Thomas his wounded hands and his pierced side. Can you imagine how it must have been for Thomas? He must have died inside to hear his own words of doubt repeated back to him. He cried out, my Lord and my God. The relief, the faith restored, the heart renewed, the spirit leaping for joy. So much contained in that moment. How powerful it must have been for all the others to witness that moment of reconnection and recommitment. We may have moments like that when we can hardly dare to believe something so amazing, so affirming, so healing. Our hearts, our spirit, our brain, just too much to take in to make that step of belief. And yet Jesus speaks to us through his words to Thomas. We are the ones that have not yet seen, yet still believe. We are the ones who are risking as much in our faith journey as Thomas did. The resurrection is for us too. The power of the resurrection to bring new life from aspects of our own lives that feel like death is for each one of us. The miracle of the resurrection reminds us that God's power is beyond our comprehension, beyond our imagination. We step out in faith, trusting God for the journey. Many of us can look back at our own lives, at the lives of our faith communities, and we can see those moments where resurrection has happened, where we have been renewed, where new life has sprung forth in ways that we could not have dreamt were possible. Because where we could see no way, God made a way and we experienced resurrection for ourselves. New life, renewed hope and purpose. And that breath of Christ offering the Holy Spirit to the disciples is for us too. The breath of God, the Ruach, Sophia, the wisdom of God, these are for us. The forgiveness of sins is for us. The ability to forgive others, the willingness to forgive ourselves. And that peace of Christ that passes all understanding is for us. We can choose to claim it for ourselves in any situation, in any moment. Every morning, I take three deep breaths in and out. And on my in-breath, I say, the peace of God is in me. And on my out-breath, I say, and all is well. We can claim this peace for ourselves in any situation, in any moment. And in these very challenging times still, when the coronavirus pandemic impacts every aspect of our lives, we need this peace. We trust that the power of the resurrection will renew the face of the earth mend our broken hearts 
and give us hope. And if, like Thomas, we simply cannot believe that at this time, we have those around us who will uphold us in their faith until we can see what we need to see to renew our own faith. And all of those gifts given by the risen Christ to the disciples are given to us too. We are blessed because we believe. Amen. Amen. Having heard the word and the message, it's an we have an opportunity now to give back to God, to bless as we have been blessed. Um, this evening, um, I want to remind you of another opportunity for, for giving back to God. Uh, I thank those who continue to support MCC Sacred Journey with your tithes and offerings. That's the only source of income that we have, and uh, we're, we're grateful for it. If you are visiting us for the first time, please don't feel obligated to give to this church. Um, but we also have an opportunity to give to MCC's Global Justice Institute. It is a group of people who uh, pay attention to LGBTQIA justice issues around the world. Some of their projects include supporting faith communities of LGBTQI uh, people in parts of the world where they are in danger. And so if you would like to support that work, you have an opportunity to do that as well. The links are on the screen or you can send a check to us and we'll pass it along. Just put MCC's Global Justice Initiative Institute in, in your memo line. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, I pray for all those who are with us this evening. I pray for those who are able to give and I pray for those who are not able to give. Let your spirit guide us so that we would know what to do right now and bless us all with the memory and the constant recollection of your love for us and of the miracles that are possible with your power. I ask this in Jesus' name and in all your many names. Amen.
Amen. Let's go to God in an attitude of prayer. Um, let us pray this evening for all those who are crying out for justice, that their cries will be heard and answered with the justice that is needed. For all those who are ill with COVID or affected by COVID, that they might find healing, that they might find a livelihood, that they might find respite, that they might find solace in their grief. For all those who are grieving tonight, God, we pray your perfect peace surrounding them. We pray for our world's leaders that they might have a heart for the welfare of all the people. And we pray for the religious leaders around this world for the same thing, that they might have a heart for love, especially a choice to love instead of standing on dogma. And we pray especially for our trans siblings, especially for the youngsters among us who are trans. God, that you might keep them safe and that we might be able to turn back the tides that seek to oppress them without understanding them at all. And we pray for the intentions that we name now or those that remain in the silence of our hearts. We pray for healing for Chris and for support for Pam. And God, we thank you that you answer our prayers. Together, let us pray as Jesus taught us using the words that are on the screen or whatever words bring you closest to the Holy One. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the dominion, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Here at MCC Sacred Journey, as in all metropolitan community churches all around the world, we celebrate an open communion, as well as the priesthood of all believers. What that means for us right now is, wherever you are, you're welcome to share in this meal and to understand it as a sacred act, no matter who it is that might be present with you. We remember that the night before he died, Jesus took bread from the table. He gave God thanks for it. He blessed it and broke it and shared it with his friends saying, take and eat all of you. My life, my body, opened up and given to you. And when supper was ended, he took a cup of wine and gave God thanks for it, blessed it, and shared it with his friends, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This is my love poured out for you, so that sins might be forgiven, so that all might be reconciled with each other and with God. He said, And whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. So I invite you to partake of whatever food and drink you have with you. Understanding 
in whatever way you do, that when we do this, we remember Jesus and he's present with us again. Amen. Our closing hymn tonight is Because He Lives. We'll sing two verses of it. 
And I invite you to rise as you're able in body, mind, and spirit and sing joyfully because he lives. One moment, please. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he bled and died to buy my pardon and empty to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know because he lives and then one day I'll cross that river I'll fight life's final war with pain and then as death gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. So let us go forth with the blessing of the God who loves us, period, no matter what, the one who is creator in Christ and spirit and more names than we can imagine. God loves us. Let's go share that love with the world and let the people say amen. Again, thank you for joining us this evening. We'll begin a new sermon series next week. Um, entitled Dare to Dance. Uh, I'm looking forward to this and I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, there's a meeting next week, Board of Directors. Um, coming up on May 8th, save the date. Uh, currently we need a web page volunteer. Uh, contact me at sacredjourneypastor at yahoo.com if you're interested in learning how to do that. Bible study resumes this Thursday and I want to remind everyone, um, make sure everybody knows that we're having a spring membership class. It's going to be online. And so if you'd like to become a voting member of this church, we're going to have two meetings. Uh, the first one will be next week, April 21st. And then the second meeting will be the week after that, April 28th. You can contact me or contact our vice moderator, Ginny Kay. And uh, we'll be happy to give you more information about that. God bless you. Have a great week.